talk to each other, greet each other in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. We've got a couple of songs to greet. Well, don't look at me like you don't know what to do. Y'all know how to this church works. Go and talk to each other. Be friendly. Be Christ-like in Jesus' name. A uh, couple of songs just to go around and say hey to each other. Go ahead and get up. Y'all know like stuff you don't want to know what that means. Got me spinning in my head, catching my breath. God bless you all. to slow down. I tell myself to keep this up. God wants more than just my love. I've been complicating things just like me to overthink. Gotta keep it real simple, keep it real simple. Bring everything right back from zero. Cause it all comes down to this. Love God and love people. We're living in a world that keeps breaking. But if we want to find a way to change it, it all comes down to this. Love God and love people. All this is freedom. It's kissing the kingdom. No one life can be found. Y'all be in prayer for Aaron. Uh, he's sick this morning, so we're just going to do the best we can to praise the Lord. You praise the Lord as you want to. I'm, we're going to praise the Lord, so let's just do this, shall we? Let's do it. Okay. Let's get this thing started. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Every praise, every praise is to our God. 
right, everybody. Well, uh, in case you can't tell by the way I'm dressed right now, we do have a baptism today. Uh, we also have baptisms next week when the heater comes in. So this baptism is going to be very similar to the Nola Chucky. It is going to be cold. Um, however, sorry. John, <laughs> yes, sorry. Yeah, sorry, John, uh, uh, who'd have known that it was a part that was made in 1991 and, uh, it would take a little while to come in, but, uh, it's nothing that we can't get through. Uh, John has, uh, been with our church for a while and, uh, he left and he moved out to Nevada. So I, I pray that your blood is not thinned out too much yet. Uh, but, it, <laughs> Uh, he, uh, he, he, he's spoken with us and, uh, he wanted to profess his love for Christ in front of everyone. And as we know, that's what the baptism is. The baptism is an outward expression of an inward change. And it's a commandment from the Lord. I mean, Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. And, you know, if we want to draw that, that bridge that we, we always like to draw between God being immutable, what is the Passover? Passover is when the Jews... Celebrate in remembrance of the time that they were passed over and their first males were allowed to live and that they were, they were exiled, they were taken out of slavery, taken out of Egypt. So this is a time not only where, where John is coming forth and professing his love for Christ, he's also professing the freedom that Christ has given him. Christ has, has released him from the bonds of this world, has released him from the bonds of the flesh, and is allowing him to move forward in his grace and in his mercy. So this is, this is not anything that is to be taken just as a rite of passage or just taken as a, an empty tradition. This is something that, that we have been called to do. I mean, you look at the Great Commission, it says to go out and make disciples of the world and to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So that is what we intend to do today, and uh, John, I do have a few questions for you real quick, if you'll come forward. John, do you turn away from Satan and all spiritual forces of evil that rebel against God? Do you turn away from all sinful desire that draw you away from fellowship with God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ? Do you intend to be a faithful follower of Christ, serving him by obeying his word and showing his saving grace in your life? Do you promise to devote yourself to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, and to the breaking of bread and to the prayers? And congregation, I always ask because now that he has come forward and he has is, he is given his life to Christ and he is, he is putting that on display today, uh, it's our job. It's our job to train him up. It's our job to teach him. It's our job to show him the way. We, we are the instructors. We can't expect someone just to get it like that. So congregation, do you promise to, to take John and to teach John and to disciple John so that he may be the faithful follower that he desires to be and he may be able to accomplish those things in Christ that were preordained since before the beginning of time? If so, Denote by saying, I do. I do. Praise God. Uh, John, if you go back here and get ready, they're going to sing a song, and uh, you're going to come in from that side. I'm going to come in from that side. weird timing on it. Thank you. Sorry. Nothing compares to this. What? 
with your profession of faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father. We baptize you in the name of the Son. And we baptize you in the name of the Holy Spirit.
Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. And Lord, we thank you for John. We thank you for all the things that he's doing and all the things that he will do, Lord. Lord, you know the path that you have put before him, Lord. May he be diligent and may he follow that path, Lord. May he not be deterred by the things of the world. And may he always remember to put you first and foremost in all decisions that he makes, Lord. Lord, may he know the love that he has from this church. But most importantly, the love that he has from you, the love that brought him into your fold, the love that has forgiven him of his sins, the love that has allowed him to walk in the freedom that comes with Christ and Christ alone, Lord. Lord, allow him to be a mighty force in your kingdom and allow him to do mighty things in your name. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. All right, everybody, this is the time of service where we do our tithe and our offering. Um, as we've spoken about so many times, a tithe and offering is more than just a financial, uh, a financial giving. I mean, if we just, if we just tie God to, to financial things, we are, we are selling God so short. What is it that you've been given this week? And, and we've gone down the list, up the list, everything. But, but everyone has had God pour into their lives in some shape, manner, or form. Believer or non-believer, because there's non-believers out there. And if you haven't been able to see God, your eyes are closed. God has given you something this week. And he's called you to pour it back into his kingdom. Now, as, as, as people that worship, we need to come in here and we need to know what it is that we're supposed to give. What it is that we're supposed to pour out. Um, part of part of our tithe and part of our offering is knowing what the, what's going on around us, staying in touch with our brothers and sisters, being able to see. Uh, right now, Dora is at home sick, so one of the things that we've been given is we've been given the power of prayer. Let's let's be praying for Dora. Let's be praying for Aaron and his family. Let's be praying for the folks that aren't here. Let's let, let's 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 truly start to become what we're supposed to be. Let's quit making a mockery of what God has put before us. And just making it an empty tradition and turn it into something that actually means something. It should mean something to us because it means something to him. Otherwise, he wouldn't call us to do it. So I pray that we take this time. And, and if, if, if it's not been laid on our heart, take this time and pray for it to be laid on your heart. He will speak. You'll be able to hear. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. And we thank you for all that you have blessed us with, Lord. Lord, may we give a fraction of that back to your kingdom, Lord. For if all your people were to, to share openly and to, to not, not withhold from your kingdom, Lord, we would be able to accomplish the things that you have asked us to, Lord. But we've seen, we've seen what happens when we become stingy, when we become empty worshipers, Lord. We see what happens in the world around us. And Lord, you knew, <laughs> you knew that, 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 that man, was exactly what man is, Lord, but you've called us to something higher. You've called us to something greater, Lord. May we achieve those things through you, through the, the ability to forgive, through the ability to, to see, the ability to, to have a self-recognition as to what has been given to us, Lord. Lord, may we give in accordance, in accordance to what the Holy Spirit has called us to give, and may we do so with cheerful hearts and open minds. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. Elders to the front, please. <laughs> there you go. Good job. Early running this place. <laughs>
doxology, please. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him. to 10. Sabrina, are you doing that? Sabrina, she going to do it. 5 to 10 over there. Y'all be blessed. Learn about the Lord. Pastor will be out in, mo in a moment, I guess.
Well, today we are also going to uh, be partaking in the Holy Communion. And uh, like the baptism, uh, again, a direct instruction from Christ. So, you know, we oftentimes believe that because we're not under the Mosaic Law, that we've not been called to do anything, that, that we don't have certain ceremonial things that we, we are supposed to be doing in worship, but obviously we do. I mean, the baptism yokes him to the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, represents the life, death, the resurrection of Christ. It, it brings him into a place where he is, he is professing his love for Jesus Christ. And then the communion, in and of itself, is to, to call us to the body and the blood of Christ that was, that was sacrificed on our behalf. The, the, the body of Christ that was given as atonement for our sins, the blood that washes away our sins, past, present, and future. And, and Christ directly commands for us to do these things in remembrance of him. So if we come and you come into a church, now this church, not all churches are the same, this church we have open communion. Open communion believes, or is, if you believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, and you profess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are welcome to come and take communion. We also do communion by a beautiful word, one of my favorites, tinctification, which means that you will break the bread, you will dip it in the fruit of the vine, and then you will eat the bread. But if you are coming up merely because we have set the sacraments out for the communion, or if you're coming up just because the person next to you is coming up, or if you're coming up because your mom and dad are coming up, or if you're coming up for any other reason, then you are trying to honor Jesus Christ, you are coming up for the wrong reason. We cannot be empty worshipers. There's a reason that we've been called to do the communion and remembrance of Christ. Because in our everyday lives, in the hustle and bustle, you know, we've got, we've got work on our mind. We've got friends on our mind. We've got family on our minds. We've got, we've got just appointment after appointment after appointment. And it's so easy for Jesus to get lost in the shuffle in our daily lives that he has asked us to do this in remembrance of him. While you've got all these other things going on, take some time and remember me. Take some time and remember that I came to this earth to live for you, even though I didn't have to, even though I was fully God. Remember that I set aside my rightful place in heaven, and came here to suffer as you do. Remember that, that, that I was innocent. Remember that I did nothing. Remember that I followed all the laws of the land. Remember that I did everything that I was supposed to. Remember that I was without blemish. Remember that I was without sin. Yet I took your place on the cross. My father poured his wrath out on me for you so that you wouldn't have to feel it. Remember that. And remember that when I resurrected, I gave you freedom. I gave you victory. All the little petty things that you, 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 you think about and you feel defeated about and you, 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 you have those inner struggles about, they've already been defeated because I defeated them for you. Jesus did all of those things for each and every one of us. See, that's why we do communion. It's not just a show. It's not just something that gets stuck on a church schedule. It's not something that's just done flippantly. It's something that we need to use to bring us to that place where we are, are closer to Christ 
and we remember. If you are here with your family, you and your family should pray together after you take the communion. You should pray that you are covered by the protection of Christ. You should pray that each and every individual is yoked to Christ the way that they should be. If you're coming as an individual, you, this is a time for you to be introspective about your relationship with Jesus Christ. Is my relationship with Christ where it needs to be? Can I truly say that Christ is the most important thing in my life? Or am I putting other things before him? What does my relationship with Christ look like? And you see, the reason that he, he wants us to be brought into this place of remembrance is not to puff up his ego. He doesn't need that. He's God. There's nothing that you are going to give him that he does not have. There is nothing that you are going to give him that he cannot attain. He is the creator of all things. He is the Lord and Master. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the Prince of Prince, the King of Kings, the start and the finish of our salvation. So there is nothing that you are bringing to the table that's going to puff him up. He is very secure in who he is and in who what he is. The reason that he wants to bring us to that place of remembrance is so that we may be able to taste what it is that he left for us. See, if we were perfect disciples, which none of us are, not one, all of the things that, that he talks about in the Beatitudes, we would, we would attain. If we were perfect disciples, we would have an idea of what perfect peace actually felt like here on earth. If we were perfect disciples, we would know what it's like to have the joy of Christ in our hearts at all times. And I know that there's people that are saying, I always have the joy of Christ. Do you? No, because we let other things interfere with it. We allow the world to take the joy that Christ secured for us. We allow the things of the world to take it away. So, so this is a point where Jesus brings us back to a center point. And that center point is him. So today as we do communion, I pray and I hope that we are looking at what it is that Jesus is asking us to call to remembrance. I pray and I hope that each and every one of us look at what was done on our behalf and come here with a thankful, solemn heart. I pray that each and every one of us take the time to look at our relationship. And I know that, 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 that you know, this is, this is a, a minuscule amount of time to do all of those things, but, but it can start the process. See, the communion doesn't start and end when I say, Craig, come to the front. We break the bread and start handing it out. And then after you dip it and after you eat it and you say your little prayer, it's not done. This is a call to remembrance that goes outside of those doors. This is a call to remembrance that should be with you all week. This is a call to remembrance that should be with you in all times. In a perfect world, we wouldn't have to call these things to remembrance. But you see, we serve a perfect God who knows, who knows that he went to the cross for an imperfect people. And as an imperfect people, we get sucked up into all these other things. So as we do this communion today, bring him back to the center. Bring him back to the center point of all things. As the week progresses... Keep that remembrance going. When you, when, you, when you have something happen, remember that he says to call upon his name. 
When, 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 someone, when someone strikes against you, remember that God, that he said that nothing will remove you from his hand. Remember all the things that Jesus has said and done on your behalf. Now, the night that he, he did this, this was the, the, the Passover dinner. This was, this was the Seder. And uh, he and the, the disciples were celebrating. And, I mean, it was, it was, it was a time where Jesus knew that his, his time was near. His time, this was it. And, and he was letting the disciples know he, that this is going to be the last time you, that we do this together. This is going to be the last time that, that we, we break bread together. This is going to be the last time that, that we are able to, to celebrate and to laugh and to, to enjoy one another. But I don't want you to forget me. I've poured into you, and you are now prepared. You're prepared to go across this world. And to do the things that I have called you to do. And he's saying the same thing to you. He's saying the same thing to me. You are prepared. You are equipped. You have all the things that you need to do what I have asked you to do. For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup. And he sipped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, do so until the Lord returns. He's called us to remember the covenant, the new covenant, the covenant in Christ, the covenant that is secured through our faith and through our belief in him. So as we do this, please remember Christ. Remember what he did. And remember that he did it for you. See, Christ knows you. This was, not, this was not Christ is going to the cross. It was not a corporate thing where he was like, all right, pour out the wrath for all the people. No. He was like, pour out the wrath for Scott Parker. Man, that hurts. That hurts. Pour out the wrath for Gary Kimbrough. That hurts. Pour out the wrath for, for Nikki Parker. That, that hurts. Each and every individual, he knows, and he knew what he was dying for. So if you were his, he, he knew you, and he knew what he was receiving and who he was receiving it for. We should be thankful. Thankful that we have not received that wrath. We would not be able to withstand that wrath. That wrath is outside of our comprehension. No matter how bad your life gets, you have not tasted the wrath of God. I mean, I know that, that it's not a perfect world. I get that. I, I live in this world also. But I, I'm also very well aware that the wrath of God has never been poured out upon me. And I'm very, very thankful for that. That's why I say that there's never been anything more heroic than what Jesus Christ did. I mean, I, I served in the military. I, there's other people here that have served in the military. And we have gone into battle, and we have done things, and we knew what we were doing. But Jesus not only went in knowing that he was not going to walk out, because no matter what I walked into, there was always a chance that I was going to walk out. So not only did he know that he was not going to walk out, he also knew that the wrath of God was going to be poured out upon him. 
He came in with full disclosure, knowing what it is that he was doing. And he loves you so much. He loves you so much that he was willing to do it. He loves you so much that not only was he willing to do it, but he was willing to tie a promise to it. That promise being, if you can be my people and I can be your God, I will grant you eternal life with the Father, with the Son, and with the Holy Spirit, a place where you'll feel no pain, a place where there will be no tears, a place where you can truly, truly be at peace. Craig, if you'll come to the front, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day, and Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to, to, to call to remembrance the things that was done on our behalf, Lord. Lord, your Son, Jesus Christ, came to this earth and lived lived under the scrutiny of the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the very people that he came to, 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 to die for. Betrayed, beaten, falsely accused, falsely prosecuted, put onto a criminal's cross, where not only did he receive the wrath of man, but he received the wrath of God. From there, he was put into a, a, a grave, a grave that was not even his, a grave that was borrowed, a grave which he defeated when he resurrected on the third day, defeating the, this world for us so that we may be able to walk free. Let us not waste this time. Let us not stand here and just make this a, a, an empty tradition, Lord. Let us... Make this the meaningful ceremony that you have desired it to be, Lord. Let this be a true remembrance of Christ. Let us be thankful, and let us always be ready to serve, knowing that what he has called us to is greater than anything that the world has for us. Let us take the time following this communion, remembering his commandments, and remembering the type of life that he wants us to lead. A life set apart. Though we may first face persecution, we may face unrest, we will face naysayers, we will face doubters, we will never face anything as horrifying and as scary as the wrath of God. Let us celebrate the freedom that we have been given. And let us give our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the glory that he deserves. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. We'll start with you, Anthony, and then just come on around. Hey, Craig, just take the whole...
in actuality, you know, we could we could leave the service right there. I mean, that's 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 what we were called to do today. Is we were called to to honor the Lord. I mean, in celebration and remembrance. But what's really been laid on my heart since Wednesday, since we had our Bible study, and we 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 keep hearing these words when when it talks about the sacrifices that that the that the uh, Israelites were called to make because at the, where we are in Numbers, they're getting ready to come into the promised land and God is establishing the rule of law for when they come into the area. So literally, they're, 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 they're sitting, in, and those that were in Bible study, I know you've heard this, but we need to fill in the rest of the room. If you look around, there's a few more people here right now, okay? So, uh, but those of y'all that have been here or have watched online, you know that right now the Israelites are literally right here at the Jordan River, and as they look across, they can see Jericho. We can see that there are millions of people. Now, from the census, there was 605,000 and some change. But that's not counting women. That's only men of, 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 of 22 years of age and fighting age. It doesn't count children. So there's millions of people. And we look back at the Abrahamic covenant and we see that God has fulfilled his covenant right here. What God said is going to happen has happened. He has said... I will give you people as numerous as the sands, as numerous as the stars, if you can count them. And when Balak and Balaam were standing, they were looking down upon the the Israelites. There is no way that they could have gone one, two, three, four, as numerous as the stars, as numerous as the sands. And then they see the promise of the land. Now, this is a people that have literally been sojourners their entire time of being a people. So we see all the words of the Lord coming to fruition. And what he's doing is he is establishing the rule of law. Now, the past two weeks, what we've talked about is we've talked about the ceremonial law. Now, with the ceremonial law, there were, there were sacrifices that had to be made. Sacrifices of bulls and, and oxen and, 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 and pigeons and turtle doves, all kinds of sacrifices that had to be made. But in every instance, it says, as a pleasing aroma to the Lord. Now, again, you know, y'all have heard this. This I'm going to put it a little bit differently. But every time I drive by Burger King, that is a pleasing aroma. There is something about that flame-broiled burger. I mean, Burger King smells so good when you drive by it. It really does. But that is not what Scripture is talking about when it says a pleasing aroma to the Lord. What Scripture is talking about, a pleasing aroma to the Lord, is the heart in which that sacrifice is being made. We can roll all the way back to Cain and Abel. And Abel's sacrifice was pleasing to the Lord because it came from Abel's heart. The reason that Cain's sacrifice was not pleasing to the Lord was because he did it out of a sense of of, of false obligation. He didn't do it out of a desire to be pleasing to the Lord. He didn't do it out of a desire to do something that is pleasing to the Lord. He did it just to do it. I don't want these things to become that to any of us. Because when we fall into that part of, 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 of worship, we are actually not drawing nearer to God. We are actually pulling ourselves further away from God. Listen to what the prophet Isaiah says. And it's directly from the Lord. And it's, it's Isaiah 29, verses 13 through 16. And it says, And the Lord said, Because the people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips while their hearts are far from me. And their fear of me is is, is a commandment taught by men. Therefore, behold, I again will do wonderful things with this people and wonder and upon wonder. And the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. And the discernment of their discerning men shall be hidden. 
Ah, you who had deep from the Lord your counsel, whose deeds are in the dark, who say, who sees me? Who knows us? You turn things upside down. Shall the potter be regarded as the clay? That he, the thing made, should say of its maker, he did not make me? Or the thing formed of him who formed it, he has no understanding? Some things to unpack there. Number one, if we turn these into empty traditions, just church traditions. You know, some churches, they do communion Every third Sunday or every second Sunday or, you know, there are some people, my papa died and I believe that my papa's in heaven. I, I know that my papa had relationship with the Lord, but he had been taught that, that, that he had to do communion every week and he thought that if he was going to do, if he, if he didn't do communion every week, that he was going to hell. See, that's a false doctrine. That's a doctrine of man, not a doctrine of God, because what God tells us is when we come to know Christ, our salvation is secured. There is no secondary act of faith that, that supersedes the acceptance of Christ as your Lord and Savior. But at the same time, if we know the Lord, and if we know what, what it is that he is trying to accomplish with these things, we can do these things properly, and it will, will, will bring forth the proper feelings, the proper emotions, and the proper relationship that we have to have. It will draw us closer to God. When we turn these things into empty, uh, empty traditions, just flippant things that we do, arbitrary things of the church, what happens is we become more susceptible to man's ideas and less open to the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. See, the baptism today should have triggered something inside of each and every one of us. The Holy Spirit should have leapt inside of us because there is another disciple of Christ here on this earth. You know, the communion should have triggered a, 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 a feeling of gratitude, a feeling of love, a desire to be a better servant. It shouldn't have just been a, a taking of a piece of bread and, and, a, and a dipping in the fruit of the vine. All of these things have meanings from God behind them, but we have to be able to sift and see what is of God and what is of man. So, so as we do these things, remember, it's not just us saying that we love the Lord. It's us actually carrying out and bearing fruit and showing the love that we have for the Lord through our lives. Through the things that we do. And sometimes the things that we do is the repentance that we have to come forward with. Sometimes the things that we do is the sacrifice that we have to make. Sometimes the things that we do is the forgiveness that we have to let go of and not withhold anymore. See, that is where Israel was at that time. And, and he says, I will do wonderful things with this people, wonder upon wonder. Because these, these people were speaking and they were saying, okay, all of this is tied to the Mosaic Law. And it's the same thing that, that Jesus was fighting against with the Sadducees and the Pharisees. The Sadducees and the Pharisees were so good at the tradition. Like you could take a Pharisee and say, okay, uh, what is it that I need to do during the Passover sacrifice-wise? And I mean, he could name it off, boom, letter of the law every single time. But then you ask them, well, what does that mean to you? Uh, uh. See, in order for these things to be an honor to God, there has to be meaning tied to God behind them. So I don't ever want us to get to a point where these things are not meaningful to us. If we get there as a church, we have a problem. 
And I'll, I'll say this also. If you're at a point where these things don't mean anything to you, please talk to one of us. That's the other thing. You see, I don't know what's going on in your life. I don't know what's overpowering the work of the Spirit in your life unless you tell me. We're not mind readers. We can tell that you're afflicted. We can tell that you're hurting. And we can say what is wrong. But unless you, you, you tell us what is wrong, we cannot work on those things. So don't be empty worshipers. When we come into the, the house of God, that's where it's time to be real. If you're here for any other reason than Jesus Christ, you probably need to be somewhere else. A golf course, Shoney's, the bed, watching cartoons, something. Because you're wasting your time. If your time in God's house is not tied to God, you're in the wrong place. And I say that for two reasons. I say that, one, because I don't want you to waste your time. And two, I don't want the congregation that I've been put in charge of to be afflicted with your doubt, with your sarcasm, and with your negativity. If you look on our wall, nowhere do we have last week's attendance, this week's attendance, or any of that stuff, because that doesn't mean anything to us. What matters is the receiving and the giving of the gospel in a true manner. So when you come here, come here and be prepared to be real in your worship. And that brings us to the next question. What is real worship? And it's super simple, so it sounds. John chapter 4, verses 23 and 24, it says, now, let me set this up just real quick, okay? Jesus and his disciples are traveling through the land, and they come to Samaria. Now, the thing that we have to understand about the Samaritans is the Samaritans and the Jews did not get along. They had nothing to do with each other. The Jews looked at the Samaritans as half-breeds. Didn't look at the, they, they, they looked down upon them. So, so a Jew would never be seen speaking to a Samaritan in the way that Jesus speaks to this woman, which brings us to another piece of context. Jesus was talking to a woman. As a matter of fact, it even says in the scripture, it says his disciples came and wondered why he was talking to a Samaritan, much less a woman. But he speaks to her and, and, and he reveals himself to her. He doesn't come out and say, I'm the Christ in so many words, but he presents himself in a way where anyone who is truly seeking the Christ would realize I'm standing before the Christ. And she eventually goes and tells everyone. But it gets into the point of worship. And, and she's like, you know, we believe that, that we can worship right here. And you say the only place that we can really worship is in Jerusalem. And Jesus responds and he says, but the hour is coming and is here now when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit. Those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. When we do these things in spirit and in truth, they bring a pleasing aroma to the Lord. So if you came up and you took communion and it really triggered a remembrance of what Jesus Christ did for you, you brought a pleasing aroma to the Lord today and you should be happy about that. And you see, the thing about those moments right there is we want to multiply those moments. Because it's not just tied to the communion and to the baptism. What are some other things that Jesus said? I'm going to take the big two that I harp on all the time, and I'm going to leave it at that for the day. Love the Lord your God 
with all your mind, all your heart, and all your soul. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. You want to bring a pleasing aroma to the Lord? Do that every day for the rest of your days. Remember, see, and it all ties together. If you remember what was done on your behalf, okay? Now, some of y'all think that, 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 you know, just like it said in the Scripture, who knows me? How does he understand me? What do you mean, who knows you? How does he understand you? He made you. And then secondly, he came to this earth and dealt with everything that you deal with. You're worried about people not liking you? Read the Gospels. Do you think everyone liked Jesus Christ? (laughs) You're worried about stress. Read about Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. You worry about, about, about sadness? Read about Jesus standing over Israel after his triumphant entry and looking down and knowing what's going to happen to Israel, knowing what's going to happen to Jerusalem, and it says that he weeps. You think that Jesus doesn't understand you? Jesus understands everything about you. Not only does he understand everything about you, he has felt everything that you have felt, and he died for it. See, but if you can bring to remembrance, right, when someone does you wrong, if you can bring to remembrance, you know, how many times have I wronged Christ? How many times has he forgiven me? I'm going to show that forgiveness. You're showing the love of Christ, and you're loving your neighbor. Because they've probably never seen love like that. Which in turn is a great way to evangelize and profess your love for the, the, the Jesus, for, for Christ himself. We have the ability to be what God designed us to be. But it takes spirit and truth. Sometimes the truth hurts. Sometimes the truth means that we've just got to change the way that we're doing things, which hurts in and of itself. But we have the ability to do it. There's no single person that this is directed at or anything like that. But, but you know, it's amazing if you watch the trajectory of our church. Now, our numbers have gone up, right? But our participation has gone down. That's not the way it's supposed to be. We've gotten complacent. We've gotten to a place where where we feel like we've accomplished what what God wanted us to accomplish. So now we're going to go off and we're going to do all these other things that we want to accomplish. That's not the way that it works. When you're called by God, you're not called for a temporary assignment. It's a permanent assignment. Therefore, our participation should not dwindle. The fruit that we bear should not decrease. It should increase. Again, spirit and truth. I'm not going to sit up here and lie to you and pat you on the back and say I'm proud because of everything that's being accomplished. Because we find ourselves having to do more and more and more. Find the place where the Lord wants you. Serve there. Serve with a true heart. Serve in truth. And serve in spirit. And watch what happens in your life. You will see your life begin to change in so many facets. It's amazing the time that we spend so concerned and wrapped up in the problems that might happen or the the things that have offended us or the things that have, 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 have set us off or the things that have wronged us. We spend all this time in that, right? 
But if we step away from that and we do the very things that he asked us to do, which is to love him and love our neighbors, and we quit worrying about those things, by the time we circle back to those things, those things have oftentimes been resolved. Because the answers don't lie in your head, and the answers sure as heck don't lie in your heart. The answers lie in Christ. I want to see every single person here attain the things that God has put before them, as does God. And the only way that we are going to do it is in spirit and in truth. So this week as we go out, think about what has been done on your behalf. And then evaluate what it is that you're putting back in the kingdom. And when I say evaluate what it is that you're putting back in the kingdom, I don't just mean the work that you're doing. Because the work that you're doing is great. What are the motivations behind the work that you're doing? There's a lot of people that do a lot of things, give a lot of money to charities and do a lot of food drives and everything else to get their name in the paper or to, 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 to build, a, 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 to go up another rung on the ladder for political office or for something. But are you truly glorifying God in what you do? Because if you're not, what you're feeling right now is your reward. It won't be later. So again, this week, go out. Think about these things. Bring your heart into a place of remembrance for Jesus Christ. And then act on it. Evaluate. Discern. Maybe maybe the, the, the ministry that you've been called to is not here yet. Maybe you're the one that has to bring it. But if you're the one that stepped up and said, hey, I will take this ministry, and then you just don't do it, what was the motivation? So this is a week of evaluation and reflection. And I pray that we're strong enough to get through it. And I pray that this is not offensive to someone. I'm sure it is. And if it is, so, you know. The reason I pray that it's not offensive, though, is because this is something that we all have to do if we want to be successful in our walk with Christ. And if the Lord offends you, again, that needs to go into your evaluation of the Lord. Am I truly yoked to the Lord if he is offensive to me? Because if you're truly yoked to Jesus Christ, there is nothing offensive about him, nor is there anything offensive about what he's asked you to do. Y'all dig? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to gather, to worship, and to celebrate you, Lord. May we always, always give you the glory. May we understand that we are merely vessels while you are the, the leader and you are the beginning and the end. You are the one that has established your reign and allowed us to be a part of it, though we're not deserving. Lord, I pray that hearts and minds are opened, and I pray that others come to know you. I pray that as we serve, we learn to serve together. We learn to serve in one accord, and we learn to serve with like-mindedness, a mindedness focused on you, Lord. Lord, let us turn our eyes to you and let us seek the real answers that can only be provided by you. Lord, I pray that if there's anyone desiring to know you and the Holy Spirit has done his work on their heart, that they pray this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins, Lord. Come into my heart and save me. Fill me with the Holy Spirit, Lord, till it overflows, for I know that you sent your one and only Son Jesus Christ to come live, suffer, and die for me. 
the blood that he spilled, atoned for my sins, washes away the sins that I have committed. And Lord, when he defeated the grave on the third day and resurrected, it guaranteed me eternal life with, with him and the Father. Defeating not only the evil one, but defeating the world and all things that may challenge me. From there, he walked this earth for 40 days. Sharing himself and his message with all those who would receive him. Until finally, in front of over 500 witnesses, he ascended into heaven where he now sits on the right-hand side of the Father as my advocate. Lord, I give myself to you, mind, heart, body, spirit, and soul. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. If any of y'all said that prayer or have any prayer, the, the altar is open. If you would, please stay. We do have announcements and, uh, and, and prayer requests coming up. I just wanted to say real quick, this is not really a traditionally a, an altar song, but it's more of a, a love song to the Lord, and I feel like this service, you do a good job, Pastor, um, <clears throat> goes in with our true heart, and going forward right now, tomorrow, the next day, forever, have a heart for the Lord, always let him be the desire of your heart, um, or just be in communion with him every day, so if this can encourage you just to love on the Lord every minute of every day, I hope it does.
that song <laughs> gets me every time. I mean, it's a beautiful song. It's, uh, that, I mean, that's, that's actually from the Bible. So, um, you know, but, but I mean, if you listen to the words, I mean, how, how humbling is it to know that the creator of all things, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you read John 1, it says that the, the Father handed creation over to the Son. The creator of all things loves you. I mean, seriously. I have people in my family that don't love me. You know, how amazing is that? That, that, that he knows everything about you, yet he still loves you. Even the bad things, you know? I mean, I don't care if you've been married for, for 50 years or if you've been married for five years. There's something that you don't know about your spouse. I'm not trying to end any marriages here. Don't get me wrong. I'm just being honest, you know. We all have things that we don't want to share because we're ashamed of them. He knows all those things. Yet he still loves you. And he, didn't, he doesn't just love you. But he loved you enough to, to, to do what we talked about during the communion. He loves you enough to, to, to set aside his place in heaven and be humiliated here on earth, to, to, to die and to take a beating and to, to, to all the things that he did, his life, death, and resurrection, all the things that we've gone over. He loved you enough even though you are who you are and I am who I am. It's just, it's amazing. And why does he not, why would we deny him the love that was spoken about in that song? I mean, if you think about just the, the, the even the opening verse, you know, a deer panting, you know, for water. That deer needs that water. And that's what we've been talking about today. That's what we've been talking about. That's where true worship starts is when we realize that we don't just love God, we don't want to just honor God. We need God. We have to have God. And if we don't, we're hopeless. We're hopeless. So uh, this week, uh, as usual, we're going to have a busy week. Uh, Monday at, at 6.30, we've got Overcomers Outreach. It is a biblical 12-step. They use the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous um, but unabashedly, Jesus Christ is the highest of powers. And uh, so that is at 630. If you, if you struggle with, with any type of addiction, please come. And I mean, if you're a professor of Christ and one of the things that, that, that you, you struggle with is, is presenting Jesus in a, in, a, in, a, in a normal AA or NA meeting, come. This will give you skills and abilities to be able to do that type of stuff. So so, so be mindful. This gives you an opportunity to not only uh, be in a meeting that, that, that Christ is honored, but also teaches you how to uh, honor Christ when others aren't. And there's nothing more powerful. Because when we honor Christ when others aren't, people get to see the true power of Christ. So we've got that on Monday. On Tuesdays, uh, we have the, the women's... Uh, the, uh, the women's Bible study at 6.30, and it's here in the sanctuary. Is my mic cutting out? Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, and it's at 6.30. It's fine. Um, and I'm right on that Tuesday, correct? Okay, just making sure. Um, I believe there's some reading that's been involved. Yeah, the, the, uh, last week, uh, last week they, they didn't meet, so it's giving you a chance to catch up on your reading. So I know everyone's going to be caught up on their reading, and they're going to come in prepared and ready to go. But guess what? If you didn't read, don't let it hold you back. I mean, it's important that we fellowship. It's just like men. You know, you see a lot of men's ministries. And the reason that there's men's ministries and women's ministries is because men and women are a little different. Have you all ever noticed that? I mean, seriously, I'm just learning this. Uh, I, <laughs> I never understood why Nikki would never play rugby with me. Uh, she did play one game. She did. She played one game of women's rugby. Killed it. She was incredible. 
There you go. There you go. Took me a little bit longer to smarten up. But uh, so, but we've got that on Tuesday. Uh, on Wednesday, we've got Bible study. Man, it, it's here at 7 p.m. If you can't make it, watch online. I want questions. There is no way that we can be in numbers. There's no way that we can be this far into the Pentateuch and we've not had any questions. If so, if there really are no questions, y'all are some Bible scholars. And I don't need to be teaching it. I need to be receiving it from you, okay? So uh, we don't get some questions this week. I will be sitting out there, and one of y'all will be teaching. That's a, that is a promise. That is a promise. So, uh, so please, you know, but come on Wednesday. It's a good time. It really is. We have fun. It's pretty loose. It's pretty laid back. Um, so, you know, come and enjoy that on Thursdays. Uh, we do have the, uh, high set training it on, on, on Thursdays, it's math. And, uh, I tell you what, those, those ladies, Debbie and Rebecca, they do an awesome job and, and it really does open up the door for, for college and for some other opportunities that you may not have had. So if the Lord's laid education on your heart, Remember uh, that, that that's available to you. Now, look, I'll, I'll tell you this, too. Okay, if it's been laid on your heart to be a minister, okay? Now, I know a lot of pastors and a lot of ministers that did not go to Bible college. That's, that's all well and good. It truly is. But I'll tell you one thing that the man who trained me and the man who, who taught me, and the man who paid for my college, said to me, is you can only take your congregation as far as you have gone. So if you only know Scripture on a third grade level, you can only take your congregation to a third grade level of understanding. Now, sometimes you have to start at that third grade level and work your way up, which is fine, which is fine. I would never come in here. And start talking about, you know, the difference between doctrines and things like that. Because we don't, that's not a conversation that we need to have as a congregation. But your education is important if this is what you're called to do. And this gives you an opportunity because you finish that, your first two years, the, the, the part that's paid for, that's your prerequisites. That's your English. That's your math. That's your psychology. And then... When you move into Bible college, you don't have to take any of that stuff. You can move right into the meat, right into the heart of the matter. So, um, so I mean, if you, haven't, if you haven't taken it or if this has been laid on your heart, pray seriously about your education. Um, on uh, Saturday, we're going to do the laundry ministry at noon. This week, uh, Shirley had some family come in town unexpectedly, so praise God. I'm so glad that she got to spend some time with her family. Um, but we're going to do it this Saturday at noon. Um, and then Sunday, of course, we're going to meet here, 11 a.m. for service. And uh, it's going to be a blast. So uh, that is the announcements for this week. Now, prayer request. I say this all the time. Y'all should be honored. And, and what I, I'm seeing is I'm seeing our prayer request get longer. Eventually, I'd love to have four or five pages to read. Because this means that we're opening up to each other. This means that, that we are starting to trust each other. This means that we are starting to become less like acquaintances, more like friends, which means that eventually we're going to become more like family, which is what God wants. There was a, a word in last week's scripture, adopted. Adopted. When you're adopted, you're grafted into a family. So, so through our adoption by Jesus Christ, through our adoption, we are family. We just have to learn to act as so. And part of that is, is, is trusting each other to pray for each other. Saying, you know what? I'm going to share this need and I'm going to share this desire because I have confidence that Scott is going to go home and he's not going to forget about me in his prayers. I have confidence that Keith is going to pray for me by name, even though he's going through it right now. 
That's uh, he's not he's not going through it right now. I'm just saying, you know, uh, you know, but but that's that's the thing about it. You know, despite their needs and despite what they're praying for, I know that they're going to pray for me also, and I, I I know that they're going to do it in a way that brings a pleasing aroma to the Lord because they're going to do it with their heart, and they're going to do it in truth. They're going to do it in spirit and truth. In spirit and truth, these people are going to pray for me. So praise God. There is no higher honor than to have someone ask to be prayed for by you. So Brandon uh, is, is, is praying that he gets Brooklyn back in his life. Uh, Brooklyn's mom finds uh, God and that the mediation goes well. And Brooklyn is his daughter's name. And uh, that is a, a righteous prayer right there. Listen to that. I mean, look, obviously there's some differences there between mom and Brandon, right? But he's praying for her salvation. That's strong. That's strong. That's a great prayer. Praise God. And I, I will be in prayer about that. And I know that, that they'll be in prayer about that. Be in prayer for Cheesehead. All you got to do is look at Cheesehead and know he needs prayer. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love that dude. I love Cheesehead. There's no specifics, so just be in prayer. Obviously, something's going on in his life. Um, be in prayer for Debbie Pate. Eric Brooks, uh, prayer for God to bring um, him uh, true love and a career job. So definitely, definitely. How's the job search going? Okay, so last week we just prayed that something happened, right? There'd be some type of movement. Well, that's a praise report. Why Why you look so sad? All right, well, smile about it. Clap about it. Give God a hand, you know? I mean, last week you had zero prospects. I mean, that's 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 all I'm saying. You see, that's, that's that, that, oh, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to choke you really, but I'm just saying, I mean, just look. Well, I don't see God moving in my life. Open your eyes. There's nothing to be melancholy about. Last week, literally the prayer was, give me a job opportunity. You got two opportunities now. Amen is right. You see, we don't give God the glory he deserves for the, for the small things. How in the heck can we expect to have the big things poured out upon us? God, that's a great thing. God deserves the glory. Keith, prayer for a discerning heart. Whew. Praise God. That is a great prayer. A great prayer. A discerning heart. You know why? Paul calls it the old man. I call it the flesh. Paul calls it the flesh in certain places too. And then we've got the Holy Spirit. Said it a lot of times as we read, and I haven't found it yet. Nowhere does it say that when we are endowed with the Holy Spirit that we are turned upside down and all the old stuff is shaken out of us. A discerning heart is a heart that's able to tell what's of God and what's of the flesh. Now, the flesh is really good at making us believe that it, what the flesh wants is the right thing. So we've got to learn to fight the flesh, and the way that we do that is through discernment through the Spirit. So that's a great prayer, a discerning heart. We will fully be in prayer for that. Shirley and Craig, for their children to know God and have peace, <laughs> amen, because that, that's the only way to have peace, for the homeless and for our church family, uh, Teresa, unspoken, uh, Harley Howard, unspoken, Rondell Price, guidance, be in prayer for Rondell, Rondell's going to be back with us in a few, uh, probably sometime this week. And uh, he's got a he's got a he's got a tough road to hoe, but but he'll make it, he'll make it. Um, and it won't be because of me, and it won't be because of uh, any counseling. It won't be because of anything other than the Lord. Again, God will get the glory for that one, as He should. Uh, Tara for herself, her parents, her children, and her church family. Uh, her son and wife to have for a healthy baby boy. Yes. All right, Grandma, how you like that? <laughs> what, what are they calling you? 
like Peyton Manning, Omaha, Omaha, Omaha. <laughs> All right. Matt, for uh, wisdom, discernment, and compassion. I'm there. I'm there. I, I, those, I, I love praying for those things and compassion. I'm just, I'm, sometimes I'm not the best at compassion. Like, if someone comes and is emotionally hurt, I'm good with compassion. Oh, man, let's pray about that, you know. But you could come to me and your arm be hanging right in half. I'd be like, suck it up, man. <laughs> I mean, seriously, put some tape on it. Yeah, put some tape on it. I mean, I, and that, that's just, that's, I mean, Nikki gets on to me all the time. She's like, not everyone has a pain threshold like you. And I'm like, they should. <laughs> I mean, seriously. So compassion is always a good one. Um, and, you know, and without compassion, it, it's hard for us to say that we, we're, we're truly loving the way that we should be. Um, Athena, this first prayer, is Athena still here? Likely story. Um, I'm just kidding. Athena had to go for work. But the first prayer is awesome because it, it says, myself. You see... I've heard all the, the, the no selfish prayers. A selfish prayer is not praying for yourself because we got to put up with you. Pray for yourself. We all need help. Yeah, you got to put up with yourself too. A selfish prayer is not praying for yourself. Pray for yourself. We need it. How can you expect everyone else to pray for you if no one else, if you're not going to pray for yourself? If you can't come to the foot of the Lord and be humble enough to pray for yourself and say, these are my shortcomings, these are my problems, I can't do it, I need your help, be with me, how do you expect me to go to the foot of the Lord and pray for you for those things? Peace, our world, and unspoken. Donovan and Cassidy for God's word and wisdom and guidance and their future merit. Yes, we are what, 13 days? 13 days until we have another bray. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. 13 days until another bray. But on the same note, there'll be one less Norris. <laughs> eh, it works out. All right, be in prayer for Taylor Williams. Uh, no further explanation on that, but we know that there's something going on, right? So, you know, when we get a prayer like that, what do we do with it? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we pray that you be with Taylor. We pray that you be with her no matter what that need is because, Lord, we know that you know the need. You know the need before I ask it. You know the need before it is verbalized. Lord, we just pray that you give her peace in her heart. And, Lord, we pray that you give her the path that she needs to go down so that she may be made whole again. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. That's how we pray. That's how we pray for someone that doesn't give us specifics. Because not everyone's going to give us specifics. This is all, you know, this is all steps. This is, this is, this is called earning trust. So um, be in prayer for her. Austin. Be in prayer for the homeless and more people to get closer and find their faith in God. I love it. I love it. We've had a lot of prayers for salvation. We've had a lot of prayers for, uh, for, for regeneration. We've had a lot of prayers for, uh, for some, some real needs in people's lives. And uh, that, that, is, that is great. That is great. Now it's time to start putting our prayers into action. Um. Big praise report, uh, Isaac Pools donated a pump and a heater for the baptistry, so we won't see anyone else like John in there. <laughs> and, and, but you see, the thing is, this and anyone who's in construction or any type of uh, any type of industry where you have to, I mean, order like like manufacturing where you have to order parts for machinery and stuff like that. Certain things come out dated. I didn't know that pump and that heater was from, like, 1991. I don't think they did either. But, uh, but they found one. They found a brand new one. And uh, it's going to be delivered. It was delivered Friday. It will be installed on Tuesday. So 
We've got quite a few baptisms next Sunday. Let's let's clap that up because that's that's good stuff. I love baptisms, but uh, but they're gonna have warm water. I want I, I want steam coming off that. If it's hot enough, I'm gonna bring a little floaty like a duck floaty, and I'm gonna do my sermon from in there. So, guys, look, have a great week, but let your week be focused on the Lord. It's going to be hard to have a great week if it's not. So stay focused, stay centered, and understand that, that, that God loves you. Billy Graham, if you, if you listen to his messages, you can watch every single Billy Graham sermon ever given, and I'm being dead serious. The, 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 the central element of every sermon that he ever gave was God loves you. He didn't deviate from that. God loves you. And how many people did he touch with that? Because that's important for us to know. God loves you. So if you lean into that and you accept that and you, you, you glorify him, he will provide over and over and over again. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we close out this service, I pray that you be with us. Keep us, protect us. Allow us to be the disciples that you designed us to be, no matter the obstacles. I pray that you make those obstacles few and far between, and that you cover us with your hedge of protection until we meet again. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen.